biotransformation. What's biotransformation? Biotransformation. Transformation, well that's changing. Something being changed into something else. And bio is uh, what? Story of your life. So it's changes done by some your biology or your biochemistry. Mm. I'm doing biotransformation right now. <laughs> yeah. This is a in class demonstration of biotransformation. Right, so what am I doing? I'm drinking this. What's in here? Sugar, mostly sugar. And I'm stomach uh, is taking the sugar in the small intestines goes into the bloodstream, broken down into eventually into ATP. That's called metabolism. That's part of biotransformation too. So this is a very broad category. I'm also uh, making new proteins. Oh, yeah, my hair is growing. I'm making new proteins. Right. That's biotransformation too. Taking amino acids and making them into a protein. Not, not so concerned about drinking sugar or making hair. We're interested in the biotransformation which takes toxins and turns them into something less toxic. And unfortunately, sometimes it goes more toxic instead of less, less toxic. It doesn't always work the right way. So, transformation process whereby a substance, any substance, change from one chemical to another, any chemical change to any other chemical, uh, in some reaction in the body. I'm like that guy that, on, on Guangzhou TV with the big pen. He's really good. He's so good at that, that computer screen. He can move that around and underline stuff. He's really, really good with that pen. We should have that system. Vital to survival. My, my uh, cola is vital to my, to my survival. It's my only source of, of sugar. Uh, also, important defense mechanisms, so uh, toxic xenobiotics, oh my god, xenobiotics, whoa, what a horrible word, xenobiotics, <laughs> what's that? This is kind of a, this is kind of a fuzzy word. Because the word biotic doesn't really mean anything. Some, what's a biotic? Something that's bio, some small bio something. But xeno, xeno is a Latin root, means um, no light, actually. It means anything from outside. So these chemicals are xenobiotics. They're chemicals that come from outside, uh, outside us. So a very broad category of terms, xenobiotics. And in the process of biotransformation, we convert these harmful substances into some substances that are less harmful or possibly just can be excreted from the body. So we're talking about uh, the metabolic fate of toxicness. Well, I'm not so good at that. Now. <coughs> the metabolic fate. Lungs and 
um, and then also want to keep in mind when we're talking about biotransformation that all of these xenobiotics are they're partitioning. Partition. Just as if we were a big chromatography column. And the chemicals are going through us as though they go through a big chromatography column. They're, the chemicals on the chromatography column will partition between the mobile phase and the, and the solid phase. These chemicals that we're talking about also partition as they're making their way through us. They partition between the aqueous phase and the lipid phase. And so the same sort of thing going on. If the, if, the, um, if the toxin is more lipid soluble, it will, uh, it will partition into our lipid phase. And those aren't turned over very fast in terms of the, uh, getting rid of the toxins from the lipid, from our own adipose tissue. That's not turned over very fast. So if the lipophilic, lipophilic xenobiotic the lipophilic xenobiotic is, uh, is stuck in our adipose tissue, and partitioning into our adipose tissue is uh, a problem because they stay around for a longer period of time. If they're aqueous, those are cleared out every day. So the lipophilic ones are, are the most concerned. potential map. Usually we're looking at electron potentials. So the surface, this is the van der Waals surface, the 90% electron cloud surface. So we're looking usually at, uh, at the electron potential differences. So the red is very negative, blue is very positive, and that kind of map. This is actually a lipophilic potential map outlining the structures, the three-dimensional structure of aflatoxin. It's pretty lipophilic. And so the darker colors here actually show the more lipophilic areas which are on the outside of the aflatoxin anyway. As I said in the previous slide, the reason these are so bad, the lipophilic toxins are difficult to excrete. They don't come out of our adipose quite quickly. Um, in the absence of some form of metabolism, these xenobiotics accumulate in the, in the, uh, in the body. If we take in, for example, dioxin, even dioxin or PCB or PCDF, any of these chemicals, lipophilic toxins, our body sees this chemical, it doesn't have an enzyme to break it down. Right? So it doesn't have a metabolic fate. It's not, it's not planned. Our body, our evolutionary uh, uh, genome did not plan never to see dioxin inside of our body. So we don't have the enzymes to handle it. And so we get a toxic response. It's not broken down, stored in the adipose tissue, and then we get a toxic response. So one good way to solve this problem, the lipophilic substances being more toxic, one good way to solve that problem is to make them less lipophilic, make them hydrophilic, and then they'll slip over, they'll partition into the aqueous phase and be excreted from the body. 